Uh, the light coming up, that's Greg. So I did an intro video on my Samsung. Um, I haven't really been successful on on uh, blending my helmet cam with my Samsung footage, but I realized I can get the helmet cam footage on YouTube. I did a short one yesterday. So it's day, uh, day 8, Monday, August 12th, and we're heading to contact... Creek for our gas, which is the Yukon Territory. So here comes Greg. I'm going to pull up alongside of him. He's going to pass me. We're just now starting our day. We're getting an earlier day on. So there he goes. All right, so I got to go catch up to him now. But uh, I'm going to let this run for about 15 minutes um, so you guys can see some good footage. You might hear, Greg, are you there? You might hear uh, me talking to Greg as I film. Greg, are you there? All right, so so he's gonna hear me talking to you guys. But I'm just gonna let it run for about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Hold on, real quick. What really is hard for me is because of the glasses I'm wearing are for distance, and then everything up close. So I'm looking at the time. Uh, we kind of pulled out around 7:35. So I'll let this run to about 7. 45 about a 10 minute clip you guys will be able to see some of the terrain and some uh, shots of Greg it's a little cool today as like I said as we're heading further north what I'm experiencing is uh, cooler temperatures and uh, more bugs so uh, Greg I'm gonna pull up alongside of you just pace you for a second I'm gonna pull back behind you so, so there's Greg on his Africa twin hold on I'm gonna get near him Okay, wave, Greg. <laughs> Here we are, documenting the can. All right, I'm gonna drop back. So we had a three, about a three and a half hour travel day yesterday. Um, we did stop. We made, we soaked up some of that time by doing some footage. We hope to get the um, because today is a longer day. We might, we not, may not be stopping as much and may not be flying the drone, so apologize for that. Unless we come across something that's very, um, very interesting, very unique, you know, we'll, we'll afford for it. We do have a campsite tonight. I want to say it's in Johnson, Johnson Crossing, which is past Lake Watson, but before White Horse. Once, uh, once we get to Contact Creek, in about an hour and a half from now, 90 miles out, we're going to fuel up, there'll be a place to eat. Uh, we can kind of start reassessing our day and see if uh, we're going to you know, go a little bit past Johnson Crossing. Um, maybe make it to Whitehorse. Whitehorse is, a, is one of the, is the capital of the Yukon Territory. Uh, it's a city, so it's not going to have a lot of the rural camping sites that we prefer. Um, but we'll just, like I said, once we get there, we'll take a look and, and determine then. But this is just a remarkable, I hope you guys are enjoying the scenery. This is what a lot of this ride has been like since uh, Fort Nelson. Once again, I, I did about 14 different little snips on the helmet cam yesterday. And I thought, hey, I'll just cram them all together. You guys get to see a, like a 15 minute viewing of different areas. But it was just a pain. It was a pain to edit and, and condense it. So I thought maybe you see some of the writing as we go along. It is colder. <laughs> I had in mind to put my windbreak underneath my jacket, but I, I didn't do it. But um, I think once the sun comes up, we'll probably gain 8 to 10 degrees. Some people on the side of the road camping. Now when I talk about fuel, this is a good point. I've got to tell you right, what happened with... Not to me and Greg, but you know we've been monitoring our fuel and our distance. But sure enough, as we're loading our motorcycles, a couple come through that are really on a time crunch. They're doing some kind of motorcycle challenge, and um, where, where time is of the essence. And they didn't monitor their gas right, so they got to our location where there is a gas pump, and it was 7:15 when they got there. But the gas pumps are closed. This isn't like the United States, where gas stations are open 24/7. Just swipe a card and you go. So the gas pumps were closed, um, and they just got to sit around and wait. And the 
one rider doesn't have enough fuel to go anywhere. She can't go back to the gas station they came from, and she cannot go forward. So they really didn't calculate the miles ahead of time. And if they did, they were counting on gas stations being opened in odd hours. So your takeaway from this conversation is when you're planning it, especially if you're on a motorcycle and you don't have accessory tanks, uh, yeah, number one, plan your mileage. Make sure those are operational operational gas stations. Greg and I have already encountered two gas stations. Not that we were planning to go to, but two that uh, we saw that were advertised but were closed for good, for good. And then you got to think, well, Canada, maybe they, you know, maybe their operating hours are from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or these people might be there. Now the lodge starts serving breakfast at 8:30, so I'm imagining by 8 they might be able to open up the pumps. That might be when the workers come in. Who knows? But nonetheless, that's um, some poor planning on their on their part, and now they're paying the price by having to wait. So just keep that in mind. I think other than our departure morning on day one at 4 a.m., this is probably the coldest uh, start temperature-wise that I've experienced. So take that away too, that, you know, once you get to uh, Liard. I said Layard, Layard, but it's actually Lee, like the name Lee, L-E-E, -E, although it's not spelled that way, but I've been told by the locals phonetically it's Liard. So once you get to Liard, start preparing for mosquitoes and colder weather. I don't know if I mentioned this, but there's no, uh, no cell phone, no GPS. We're strictly going by our pre-plotted miles, knowing where the uh, next gas stop is. Well, something else I was going to mention, there is a lot, a lot of museums. Um, everyone knows that I love museums, but um, Greg's shaking his head. Greg's like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> um, what I will tell you is this. Go to at least, you can probably go to a museum at every stop. I will say this. Uh, I've got what I want out of the museums, learning about the Alcan and learning about the, uh, the Yukon and the, the trapping industry, the fur trade, stuff like that from when people started populating the area. My recommendation is, you know, pick one or two of them. You know, you got 1,200 miles about to go from Dawson Creek up to Delta Junction. Um, I like the ones I went to. I would definitely say do not pass up Dawson Creek Visitor Center. Uh, and do not pass up the uh, Heritage Village, where it talks about uh, the Heritage Villages in Dawson Creek also, that Camp Mile Zero campground. So you can get a lot right before you start your trip, which, which I did. I stopped at that one in, I want to say Fort Nelson. Yeah, it was cool and everything. It was unique, but it was stuff that I had seen before, kind of just reinforced what I was going to experience. And there's some scattered along the way. And everyone knows I love museums, but um, it comes to a certain point where it gets repetitive. You can only see so many taxidermied animals. And if you guys are watching my videos, every museum I'm in, they're very proud of taxidermying their wildlife around here. So you can only see some. I want to see some live ones. That's what. That's what I want to show you guys on my YouTube channel. I want to show you guys, and and that is another point. Um, we never really plan on a start time. We've been doing it at 10 o'clock most of the time. But yesterday was 8.30, today's 7.30. And we're almost thinking, maybe that's why we're missing the animals. Maybe because we're starting at 10, it's getting warmer, they're going into the shade. Uh, I've only seen one moose ascend in it as it was going back into the woods. Greg saw it first. Greg saw a gray wolf, numerous crows, a couple of roadkill. But hopefully, starting at 7.30 in the morning, maybe that's when the animals are, I don't know. But uh, I think, oh, there's, 
after our fuel point, Watson Lake has a um, the site post for us, which we're definitely going to do that. But they also have something that I'm not going to stop at. I read about it, and it's not information that you can't really get online. If you have time to stay in the Watson Lake, absolutely do it. But it's kind of like a um, observa mini observatory, not an observatory where they have a telescope, but a planetarium where they talk about the Canadian uh, the Canadian involvement with the shuttle missions, and they have like a I forgot the name of it now, but they have it at Griffith Park where you look up and you see a rendition of the um, atmosphere and outer space, and it shows you the the stars or whatnot. Uh, if we had more time, I would think about it. I mean, I, I did think about it, and I thought, well, that's not. Um, we have a lot of that in Southern California. We have the Museum of Natural Science and History by uh, USC campus. Uh, we have a shuttle there. So if, and that's one thing about growing up in Southern, and well, we also have the Griffith Park Observatory. So things like this are great if you're traveling through and you do not have those resources locally to where you live and you wanted to learn more about the shuttle missions, the International Space Station and whatnot. It's kind of cool to get different takes on different events in history, but um, I'll just point that out. If you get that book that I mentioned, Alaska, it's called Alaska Highway 202, which is 202 uh, iconic places to stop along the way. I do recommend that. Buy it on Amazon ahead of time, but <laughs> unless you plan on being a Bob Waldmeyer from Route 66 and living on the Alaska Highway, you're not going to cover every natural spot, never, not all the historical marks. You will spend many, many hours, many, many days trying to cover that. So just go through, read about them, pick which ones. And um, I don't want you to get burnt out, but if you see the videos I did, you're probably not going to see much more of that type of museum. Uh, probably more nature stuff from here on out. You know, if we see animals, life, um, almost said livestock. Well, if we see a bunch of cows, I'll make sure you guys get that. No, if we see anything in the wildlife. Let me check my time. I don't want to run this video too long. So it looks like I've been, I, I have to look at my cell phone. At least the clock is working there. Looks like we got about 10 minutes of footage. You got a good idea of um, what we're experiencing, uh, the terrain. Talked about what we're doing today. So I'm gonna shut it down for now on the helmet cam. In the event, I'm gonna let's see if I can get a head nod from Greg in front of me. Greg, if we see wildlife, do you wanna stop or do you wanna just keep going and film while we're, nod your head if you wanna stop if we see wildlife. Okay, so Greg's saying if we do see wildlife, and we're at a safe distance, of course. Uh, number one, I keep the KLR running in case that wildlife has more interest in us than we do of them. But uh, yeah, we will stop. I'll, keep the, I'll turn the helmet cam back on and we'll capture some things. Now, we were told yesterday that north of this area, there were some bison herds. This is an oft, often common area for bison. Um, and anyone who's watching this, if you want to educate the viewers on the difference between bison and buffalo go ahead but to the novice guys such as myself they are called bison but if you showed me them side by side i wouldn't be able to tell you what a bison or what a buffalo is so bison i don't see any yet if i do i promise i'll capture it um hoping to see it because that's what they said we were going to experience take care everybody and i think if we do stop i might put on that jacket liner all right take care bye